Paul Heyman. Even though Brock Lesnar was not on this show, we saw him come back at SummerSlam. Where does his allegiance lie? I love the story of wondering where Heyman falls in all of this and the drama that it's going to cause. They played it up here on the show. Kayla Braxton approached him in the back early in the show. Where do you stand in this whole Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar thing? And Heyman said, I stand in the same place I always do. I stand with my tribal chief. And when he went to go open the door to Roman Reigns' dressing room, it was locked. He was locked out. And eventually the Usos came out in a later segment and said, Oh, hey, Us, Roman's not here yet, but you know, you could tell us. You knew that Brock was going to be there at SummerSlam, didn't you? And Heyman said, No, I didn't know. And then they said, Well, you know, you, you sent us to the back at SummerSlam. And he said, No, I didn't. That was Roman that told you to stay behind. And they were very skeptical. You could tell they didn't trust him. Then they went back into the room and shut the door behind them. Later on, Roman Reigns shows up. And he finds Heyman waiting outside the door. And he says, what are you doing? Do I have to open my own doors now? And Heyman opened the door for him. And Reigns went inside. And he said, are you coming in with me? And Heyman said, oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And he went inside with him. And Then before the main event segment, they were in the gorilla position just before they were about to come out. They were going to have a Roman Reigns and Usos family celebration. And Reigns looked at Heyman, because Heyman was going to stay behind. And Roman said, no, no, you're family. I love you. And he brought Paul Heyman to the ring with him. So Roman was being very nice to Paul Heyman. But it's it's a very subtle thing. Uh, his delivery, I thought, was great with all of this. There's There's this underlying tension that Maybe as soon as this Friday night, you know it's just going to blow over. And I think Paul Heyman has a beatdown coming his way. But they had the family celebration at the end of the night. Roman and the Usos are out there. They're holding up all their belts. Pyro's going off. And Heyman started talking. All of a sudden, Finn Balor's music hits. And out comes Finn Balor. He points out that, you know, I got screwed out of my title match at SummerSlam by John Cena. He promised to deal with John Cena in due time which I thought was a very interesting line. You know, Cena only has one show left that he's announced for, which is the September 10th SmackDown at Madison Square Garden. I had just assumed that it was going to be a dark match, maybe that he would be in for the live crowd. But if you don't think that you're going to have John Cena back for a long time, and it it, it sounds like Cena is going to be gone for a while. It sounds like they have no idea when they're going to be able to get John Cena back. So if you know this, if you know that Cena after the 10th is going away and you have no idea when you're going to be able to get this guy back, why not promote a John Cena versus Finn Balor match for SmackDown on September 10th at MSG? I mean, I can only remember them having one match before on TV. I think it was a a qualifying match for the Elimination Chamber one year. Cena won. Have Cena put Balor over before Balor challenges for the championship at Extreme Rules. But Balor came out and said he was going to challenge Reigns for Extreme Rules. But then he he decided, you know what, I don't want to wait until Extreme Rules. I want the title match next week. And Balor threw the microphone at Roman. And this big brawl broke out. The heels overwhelmed him. The Street Profits came out for the save. And uh, Balor and Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins, they all cleared the ring. Balor hit the coup de grace to Jimmy Uso. On Talking Smack, it was confirmed, it was made official, Roman Reigns will defend the Universal Championship on SmackDown this Friday night against Finn Balor. Now, I am sure that we're not going to get a clean finish, which is why I was thinking that we might see Seth Rollins get involved, or, or even Edge. Balor then gets his rematch at Extreme Rules. But I think he gets a big win first over John Cena at MSG. That's what I would do. Unless there's some reason John Cena can't wrestle an actual match. You know, they're they're worried he might get hurt. It's always possible, but if if there's no restrictions on any of that, you gotta do that match. You do Balor and Cena, it's a big attraction to do on television. Balor goes over, it gives him that much more credibility going into what I assume is going to be the rematch with Reigns at the pay-per-view. Now, I mentioned that there was no Brock Lesnar on this show. Per the Observer this week, the Brock Lesnar deal was done very last minute. 
to create a moment for SummerSlam and probably to get people talking about something other than CM Punk. Fightful Select reported that Lesnar has signed a year and a half long deal that will last into the year 2023, at least the beginning of that year, guaranteeing at least eight matches on this contract. Now, if you figure the Saudi show in October, the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, let's assume there's two more Saudi Arabia shows next year. That's five matches right there. But they've got Lesnar penciled in as a baby face for the first time. That's probably the first time since, what, 2003? They've got Lesnar penciled in as a baby face on the SmackDown side. My guess is that they're going to save Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar's first match for Sweet Saudi Money 6. Roman's going to retain, but not clean. So that way they keep things open-ended. I don't like it because I would do this... I would save that match on a bigger show. But let's say that's exactly what happens. They do the match October 21st in Saudi Arabia. You know, I'm looking ahead now. We get Roman Reigns against Bobby Lashley at Survivor Series, right? At the whole Raw versus SmackDown theme. You do champion against champion, non-title. Let's say we get Reigns and Lashley at Survivor Series. Brock Lesnar does a run-in. Maybe it gives Roman Reigns a disqualification win. But this leads to something else. This leads to a stare down and a pull apart between Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. Because Brock Lesnar just cost Bobby Lashley the win. He just cost him a win over the Universal Champion on SmackDown. And they get into a pull apart. Maybe there's a a confrontation even on Raw the next night with Lashley injuring Lesnar and putting him out for a while because Brock's not going to be back on TV for a while. He's off TV, we don't see him, but you've now planted the seed for a Brock Lesnar-Bobby Lashley match. And you have, at least temporarily, transitioned away from Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Especially if they're confident they're going to be able to do Reigns and The Rock at WrestleMania next year. And you're not going to do Reigns and Lesnar at WrestleMania. You transition away from that and you set up Lesnar against Lashley for the WWE Championship on the Raw side. That should be the WrestleMania match. Lesnar wins the Royal Rumble. He has his choice now of either Roman Reigns or Bobby Lashley. So there actually is some drama over who he might choose. You can make the argument that either of those matches would make sense for WrestleMania, right? He's got issues with Roman Reigns and let's say Paul Heyman, if Paul is still with Roman. He's got the issue with Bobby Lashley. He chooses to go after Lashley and get revenge and challenge for the WWE title. And you set that up. I'd love it if they could find a way to keep Heyman together with Brock somehow so we can get dueling promos on TV with Paul Heyman and MVP leading into WrestleMania. But even without Heyman at at Brock's side, I think Brock against Lashley should happen. That would be the place to do it. And remember, Big E is still lurking with that Money in the Bank briefcase.